Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks. And if you told me back in 2012 that I would be one day actually considering that the Super Pershing was a good tank, I would have probably laughed at you. The Super Pershing always has this place in my heart. Not because it's a good tank. I, I truly hated the vehicle, probably right up until recently. But because it was my first viral video on YouTube. That's right, armed with basically a phone camera and my good buddy Ike at the time as cameraman. I went to Tankfest in 2012 and Wargaming had a, a very, uh, I wouldn't say unprofessional booth for the time. But when you consider it to the kind of booths that they have at these huge events that they go to these days. Yeah, it was, it was, it definitely would look amateur, right? It was a good time. They had computers there, they had some press accounts on them and you could test out all of the vehicles that you didn't have in your garage. But importantly, I saw a vehicle that I had never seen before and that was the Super Pershing. Obviously a tank which at the time, in the summer of 2012, that they were testing out and they hadn't released it, any kind of information to the public. Back then, getting news in World of Tanks was uh, a little bit different to how it is now, right? Now it feels like it's leaked several months ahead, and then you have this NDA with people like me going and fully reviewing the content so that you can have a good idea of what it's like on the day that it comes out, right? Back then, we had me, my buddy Ike, and, uh, and a cheeky camera, a phone camera, and I play this game, I believe it was, on Siegfried Line. Was it the Siegfried Line map? Uh, I can't even remember what the name of that, that, yeah, I think it is Sigrid Line. And, um, didn't even have any audio. The audio was so awful with all the people speaking around that I decided to just omit the audio and do the video with my terrible post-game commentary, which is, which back then was, oh uh, yeah, like Wargaming's booth, a lot less refined than now, right? The Super Pershing was a vehicle that basically, in my opinion, was a worse version of the Pershing. Apart from having the, the spaced protection over the front, you sacrificed everything that made, in my opinion, the Pershing good. And the Pershing was one of my favorite vehicles at the time. The Pershing was the first tank that I managed to get. Doesn't seem very impressive now, but over a thousand average experience in over a hundred games. And that was because it's just so well-rounded. I feel like it encouraged me to try and become the holistic World of Tanks player. And so I despise the Super Pershing. Slow, cumbersome, everything that the Pershing was not. This kind of great all-rounder. Now, in update 1.12, Wargaming have decided to update the Super Pershing to make it uh, arguably truly super inside the game. Now, so what have Wargaming done to it? Well, they've improved the dispersion of the gun when you're moving, which means that you don't have to aim for so long after you've stopped moving to be able to engage your opponents. Wargaming have also massively improved the power to weight ratio of this vehicle to now 14.24. We are having some graphical issues there. I apologize for that. I don't know why the lighting is going. This is a slightly older version of World of Tanks and maybe World of Tanks in the recent update of Micropatch have changed a few of those things. So they've updated the dispersion when moving and the power to weight ratio. The power to weight ratio is now 14.24. That's not incredible for a medium tank, but it's not like the abysmal 10 horsepower to ton ratio that this vehicle previously had, which basically meant that the vehicle was refined, well, resigned, I should say, to playing a heavy tank role on the battlefield. Now the vehicle has so many more opportunities. It's able to actually get around, get to where it needs to go possibly even make a flanking play, as you see me doing here. I saw that there was a Basante towards the east of this map, and after I managed to carve up a bunch of lower tiered tanks, as the Super Pershing is kind of meant to, as it does have preferential matchmaking, I decide, well, how about I flank around and try and get this Basante in the side. Now we can turn it around on the tier eight Italian auto-reloading heavy tank, which is kind of just like a Super Pershing, but almost better in, in, in most ways, definitely. Would I rather play the Super Pershing or the Basante? Well, clearly I'd rather play the Basante, but the Super Pershing, it has that preferential matchmaking, so it never has to meet tier 10 tanks, which is a huge bonus. And now with the bust of the Super Pershing, I'd still rather play the Basante, at least most of the time. But this vehicle, when you're absolutely bored of tier 10 matchmaking, can still be very useful indeed. And just look what we did. We tried to flank, we advanced into a position, 
It didn't work out because there's an S1 at the back of the map who's already on two kills and managed to chunk off a quarter of my hit points in a single shot, so I decide to get out of there. Again, something that previously wouldn't have been possible in this vehicle without the buffs inside it. So apart from the power to weight ratio, apart from the dispersion when moving, Wargaming have also buffed the turret traverse on this vehicle, which allows it to re-engage targets that are in front of it and be a lot more con convincing in trying to re-engage those tanks. So take a look at this dispersion when we're moving here. We just don't really have to stop nearly so much. It really was a tremendous buff to this tank. Dispersion values are one of those things that really do revolutionize the way you can play. You see that I'm even aiming for the weak point there against the Super Pershing? There is actually a gap there in the space armor where that machine gun is, and so you can take advantage for aiming for them. But in all other situations, just load gold and fire through the lower plate of the super pushing and you should be good. And all in all, I played this game and I was like, oh my lord, maybe I actually have to give this tank some respect now. We're up to 3,000 damage, 4 kills, and we've just had all of the tools at our disposal to be able to do that. Now look, this isn't the most flashy tanks. While it is faster, it's by no means fast. And also, while the gun is buffed, you know what, with 0.38 accuracy and 1,800 base DPM and 200 millimeters, 202 millimeters, I should, if I'm being exact, of standard penetration, yeah, look, the Super Pershing, the statistics of it don't really seem like they're still holding up compared to most vehicles that this tank is going to fight. Oh my lord, what is that? It's like some kind of depth into hell there from the Pantera. I believe, you know what this actually is. Should we try and find out what this is? I think it's actually the Pantera's tracks or even the Pershing's tracks on the enemy team flapping around. There are some weird bugs in World of Tanks when they adjust, situa when they adjust micro things on the vehicle. And then I try and play like a, an older replay with a newer version of the game. So apologies for that. Okay, let me focus back up. And that is that this tiger is now just caught right in the open. But my rate of fire is not quite good enough to be able to handle that situation. Okay, so with the tiger there, with the Pershing out towards the west, and with the S1 who's clearly holding down the, the corner of the map, we've now actually managed to get the hit points back in to equal standing and while the enemies have one extra tank on their team i'm going to try and change that i feel quite confident in this scenario this vehicle with its 10 degrees of gun depression and its newfound mobility it's going to work very well in this central location on redshire and my goal is to try and secure the flanks i want to try and get the pershing out so let's have a battle of the pershings which one's going to be the better one the standard tech tree tank or the Super Pershing. Well, we're going to have to find out a bit about that. And oh my lord, that is one of the most weird graphical bugs ever. I apologize for that. I'm going to be turning away from that as quickly as I possibly can. Okay, so what? What is it even? This is just... Either that or my graphics card is dying. I really hope my graphics card isn't dying. It'll be truly awful if that was the case. This graphics card was very hard and very expensive to be able to get a hold of. Oh dear. Anyway, look. Here we go, it's the duel of the Pershing. We've got the Super 1 played by Quacky Baby and we've got the uh, Tech Tree variant here played by the enemy team. Unfortunately, we missed the second shot there, but I decide to just take the opportunity to go and get into close quarters combat. Look, the Pershing is going to be better than me when it comes down to engaging at long range, which it does have a superior gun. But if I can try and get close, and I can try and put some pressure up with the armor that my tank has, then yeah, he's not going to be too good. I'm very happy that we high rolled. I'm even more happy that one of my teams helped out there. And I decided to take the risk that I would have the better rate of fire than the player. Knowing that I have a premium consumable. Knowing that I have brothers in arms. And knowing that I have, uh, yeah, the very good crew inside this tank. I'm also using a gun rammer on this vehicle with vents. And if you're wondering how I'm able to actually go so fast in this... Uh, was I using a turbo in this tank? Actually, no, I wasn't. A lot of people have told me, put a turbo on the Super Pershing. But now that the vehicle can go at 40 kilometers an hour forwards and 18 backwards, and it's got a fairly decent power to weight ratio, I think there are better modules to take on this tank. Previously, before the power to weight buff, I probably would have thought about putting a turbo on this tank. But I think 40 is enough. This vehicle should still kind of be played like a heavy tank. But it's a heavy tank that has better camo that can actually now make more, um, should we say, confident flanking plays. You're not going to get spotted nearly as much. And that's because this tank's camo rating on the move is going to be way, way, way better than that of a heavy tank. Because that's the way the game works, right? So having taken out the Pershing towards the west, 
I'm wondering if there's going to be a Dickamax in the corner or maybe even a Sneaky Tiger that's managed to get there, and it's all about controlling the flanks. You've seen all of the different positions that I've taken so far on this Redshire map. We control the most important location in my opinion, try to flank around to dig out a player who was in a, a superior hold down scenario, realizing that I couldn't deal with the S1 at the back, fell back, controlled the center, controlled the flank, swept through, secured the corner, and that's because when you're in a vehicle like this which has incredibly good frontal armor but awful side armor, you really always want to make sure that you are securing your flanks. And if you do that, then you can be even more confident in flanking your opponents. And we get to shut down the tiger on the enemy team. Now firmly putting this game back into our team's favor, but oh no, a disaster. A Dickamax on the enemy team puts an average roll of 300 through the front of my vehicle. I ping where the Dickamax is and I get forwards and there they are. I shoot the tracks to try and lock them down and hold them in place. That also means that we get a little bit of tracking and a little bit of spotting. Maybe because the Dickamax actually repaired their tracks very quickly there. We block a gold round, which was the subsequent shell from the Dickamax. Now up to 4,000 damage, 2,000 spotting, and a top gun to boot. The Super Pershing is truly actually looking like that. And look at this glorious vehicle. Very fetching with this um, paint scheme, this style, whatever you want to call it, that Wargaming had, I believe, from the 10th. 10 years of World of Tanks anniversary event. Or was it the 25 years of Wargaming anniversary event? I don't even know what it was. All I know is that we got the coins and then you spent your coins and yeah. You know what? This is pretty much like the Patriot but just different in a way, right? With the regard to the style. It's not the Patriot, it's the Stars and Stripes style. Alright, so a Tiger just went directly towards the S1 three shots, 1,200 damage, and I'm like, no, 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 no. How about we don't go after an S1, which is on full hit points, and instead we just control the cap and we wait for them to have to attack us because that's what we should do. You'll see that I asked my Parenterra to fall back. Big shout out to the SU-130PM on my team, Duka Stern, who is managing to cap out. And with five, four, three, two, one, one, the S1 decides not to make the play, obviously deciding that they want to kind of camp at the back and don't want to charge in front of three vehicles, although they had everything to gain and nothing to lose. When you actually look at it, if they'd had the hit points activated, they would have seen that we, we only had 114 hit points more than them. And that would have, should have given them great confidence to come out, to go after us and go for the win. But the S1 deciding they want to play at that true camping role as they have been doing since the start of the game, decides to forfeit, result which I'm very happy with. This is probably one of the best games I've ever had in the Super Pershing, I think, and it's no surprise, it's since the vehicle has been buffed. So, an all-round solid round here for a Super Pershing, an ace tanker for the 1,746 base experience we get, a steel wall, something that you don't get every day for a medium tank, for ricocheting at least 11 hits that would have dealt over a thousand damage, a high caliber for the four thousand damage that we dealt, and also a top gun for those six kills. And as this is a full blooded premium tank, we make a hundred and eight thousand credits profit. So, all in all, do I think that the Super Pershing finally deserves the respect of being a, a super tank? Probably. I, I, I think that there will be some players out there who have this vehicle, which is either really, they've picked it up because it's really cheap and it's actually quite a good bargain from that perspective, or they've got it lying around their garage. It is definitely worth dusting this off and giving it another go. With the new speed, if you combine it with, at least in my opinion, a gun rammer, vents, and vertical stabilizers, if you have a really good crew, that will give you still enough view range to be able to spot at decent distances, or alternatively, maybe you could drop one of those modules off for coated optics, or if you absolutely, utterly have to go really fast, then you could put a turbo inside the mobility slot, but I think you'd be missing out on the holistic nature of the tank, which is exactly what the vehicle feels like for me now. It feels as if it's a medium tank, albeit slightly slow, that just has better armor that can really put the pressure up on its opponents and allow it to be more aggressive. And undoubtedly, the best thing about the vehicle is its preferential matchmaking. Sure, you saw a really nice situation for this vehicle here where we were dealing with tier 6 tanks. But that happens a lot more often when you take every single tier 10 tank out of the equation as this vehicle can never meet tier 10 tanks. Considering how many 
of them there are in the matchmaker i can tell you preferential matchmaking tanks like the super pershing getting buffs feels a lot sweeter than at least when it did previously in its unbuffed form where it was just constantly meeting those tier 8 and tier 9 tanks the buffs really do help it to at least try and keep up with the power creep in the game anyway ladies and gents boys and girls that's it for today hopefully you enjoyed this one if you did give it a thumbs up if you hated it give it a thumbs down let me know what you think about the buffs to the super pershing if you tried it out is it now good is it still crap and if you're watching this video as it goes live on Sunday, it's time for the World of Tanks Tech Tree Showcase live right now on twitch.tv forward slash quickiebaby. And it looks like out of the 400 of you who have voted, most of you want to see the Panzerkampfwagen Sieben. So come along as I play this side-scraping tier 10 German super heavy to see if it can still pack a punch at tier 10. And if you've never seen one of my Tech Tree Showcases before, they're basically like miniature tank reviews starting at tier 1, ending up at tier 10 so you can see the how the whole of this German heavy tank line plays out. So really looking forward to seeing all of you live right now. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.